All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network Training Call. This is a, a weekly training that um, uh, EIN, as we're going to, I'm going to do EIN just because it's easier to say that than the whole long thing. Uh, EIN is doing every week on Tuesdays at 1, 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and uh, my name is Robert Evans. I am one of the co uh, one of the hosts of this weekly training interview series that we do. Um, I am a co-founder of a tech company called ActionEra. ActionEra owns EIN, and so therefore we, we we own a few different companies that we kind of bring leaders together to educate and and train and share uh, their knowledge with all of you uh, wherever you're at in the world. Uh, but we uh, uh, we we're here today on Election Day. This is November fifth. Here in the United States, um, this is election day, so it's not it's not like it's a small or big or like you know it's just just a small little blip in our uh, our country here. But I'm I'm here with our very special guest Jay Fairbrother, and uh, Jay's got some knowledge to drop on all of us here today that I'm gonna pick his brain about because I think it's one of the most um, powerful uh, strategies for both. Uh, working with clients over the long term and monetizing your business at a very high level to create a six figure or above income. And so I'm very excited to talk to Jay about what he's an expert in. And you, if you haven't figured it out by now, based off of his graphics, uh, uh, his, he's, a, he's an expert in and teaches people how to create successful masterminds. But let me just give you guys the official uh, official bio, and then I'm going to add my little personal bio bio or personal uh, thoughts to it at the end. Jay Fairbrother is a business coach with 30 years of experience starting in starting, buying, and selling seven-figure businesses. After losing everything in, 2000, in the 2010 financial crisis, Jay rose from the shame to shine as the mastermind guy. That's who he's known as, the mastermind guy. Jay's programs include six-figure masterminds bootcamp and masterminds mastery. Now, that's his official bio. Let me tell a little bit about Jay um, as I know, Jay is um, one of the most uh, respected people in the room when it comes to his presence and his ability to be able to take care of the people that he works with. We just got done doing an event in Colorado called JVX Live. Jay was on stage teaching, and he also had a number of his clients that had attended this event. And one of the things that and I don't want, I want you guys to understand the character of the person that we're interviewing here today, because this says a lot about uh, why he does what he does. And, uh, you know, he does what he does because he cares about his clients and teaching them to be successful in the ways that he's become using this particular model that we're going to be talking about today. And there were six or seven people in the room that were raving about Jay. They would get up in front of the room and they would talk about the influence that they uh, that he's had in their lives and the impact that he's had in their lives. And so, so you know, aside from you know all the kudos that he deserves and what he's done with his business and creating uh, this this knowledge and you know and training and content around creating masterminds. Jay is just a entrepreneur with a huge heart that's here to serve. And that's why we asked him to be on this call here today is to help serve you and talk to you about uh, what he does and why he does it. And we asked Jay to give us kind of like this, hey, what do you, you want to title this? And I love what he put down because I think this is something that a lot of us would really like to uh, have. And that is, how do you attract and keep clients three years rather than three months? And, you know, the one thing that you'll, you'll, that you should know about Jay is that he's, his clients work with him year after year after year. And there's a reason because he's created this way of serving and supporting his clients. And that's what I think we're going to talk about today. So Jay, honor to have you here today. I really super appreciate you. Um, let me just kind of start off with, give me a definition of a mastermind. What is... What is a mastermind in the kind of its simplest terms? Yeah. Um, Robert, thank you for that intro. That was amazing. Uh, I hope I get a recording of that so I can share that with my kids someday. Oh, I hope so too. Yeah. Um, so uh, masterminds. So first of all, I think the, what the reason to ask for a definition, I think, is because in our industry of coaches, healers, speakers, thought leaders, 
often things that are labeled a mastermind are really just group coaching programs with a mastermind label because that's a little sexier and maybe they can charge more money. So Napoleon Hill, many years ago, coined the term mastermind. And the concept's pretty simple. You have one person with a brain in a room, a second person with a brain. And he described this invisible, intangible force that's created that he called the mastermind. So if you imagine eight to 14 people in a room, eight to 14 brains, the size of that invisible, intangible force, when you tap into the collective experience, the collective knowledge, the collective wisdom of all eight to 14 people. So that's what I, you know, the Napoleon Hill true mastermind, it fits that description. The reason I use eight to 14 is because in my 25 years of experience creating and running masterminds, when you get below eight, it's just less of that invisible intangible force to tap into, less of that shared experience. And when you get above 14, one of the key principles in running a true mastermind is that in every single meeting, every person should participate and feel like they have a voice, right? If you have 20, 30, 50 people in a program, you're gonna need a four, five, six hour meeting in order to feel like everybody really participated, not just the extroverts who are the ones that ask the questions and, and jump on you know hot seats. So that's what I call it, true mastermind. In actuality, a lot of my clients create what I call a hybrid mastermind. And that is one where it can grow to 20, 30, 50 people. And it's also a hybrid in, because as coaches, healers, thought leaders, often we are teaching or we are coaching and mentoring as part of the program, right? Yeah. Not just sitting and facilitating the discussion between that smaller intimate group of people. So what I call a hybrid is like a cross between group coaching and that sort of true Napoleon Hill type mastermind so that we can still be the coach, mentor, leader, uh, trainer as part of the program. But what we what distinguishes it from group coaching is that we intentionally do things to create relationships with the people in the program. And that ties into the three years, not three months. Because what I say is people will join your mastermind because of you, right? Because they want to follow you. They want to learn from you. They want coaching or mentoring from you. But they will stay in your mastermind because of the relationships they've built with the other participants in the program. So like when you run out of content <laughs> in you know three months or six months or 12 months, People won't leave your mastermind because it's like, I love these people that are in this program with me. I have built relationships with them and I don't want to leave them. So to me, that's what creates what I call stickiness, which is that people will stay with you be because you intentionally did things to build those relationships through the program. And then and in building those relationships, I would say often, I mean, and just based off of my experience of masterminds, uh, often those relationships also lead to monetization because of the relationship of whether it's a direct joint venture or collaboration with that particular person in the mastermind or an introduction that they've made to someone else that could you know, lead to that. So in a lot of ways, I think that being a part of a mastermind, especially over a period of time and really getting to know the people that are in there and supporting them and being supportive back pays for the mastermind that they're probably a part of in, you know, what is generated as a result of that. Do you think that's, is that accurate? Is that an accurate yeah, statement? A hundred percent. So one of the ways I contrast that is if you think about like a BNI meeting, most people are familiar with the BNI thing, where the purpose to go to those meetings is to get referrals, to get business from each other. In a mastermind, unlike a BNI meeting, that's not the purpose of the group. It's a byproduct of the group. The purpose of the group is to, you know, follow or get coaching or mentoring from the leader, as well as learn from and grow from the other people in the program. But almost always when you develop mutual respect for each other, when you get to actually build a relationship, then doing business with each other is a natural byproduct of that relationship. Yeah. 
Yeah, it almost feels like if you go into a BNI, you're going in there just always with that business hat on. I'm here looking for the deal or the relationship that leads to the deal. But when you go into a mastermind, that hat changes because it changes from, hey, I'm in business mode to, hey, I'm in personal mode. Now, all of a sudden, you're checking in on each other's families and you get to know each other at that deep level, um, which is pretty uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. also a shift in perspective from what can I get out of this yeah. to what can I do to help everyone get something out of it, right? So you yeah. go into a BNI meeting and it's like, what can you do for me? Yeah. Whereas in a mastermind, you create the culture of what can we do for each other? How can we help each other? I joke and say, you know, there's two kinds of people you don't want in your invitation only exclusive mastermind lurkers and right. narcissists yeah <laughs> that's that's a good general rule of thumb there for sure uh let's uh let's look at the two sides of the fence here let's start on the side of the fence of being a part of a mastermind not instead of running it because i know i know you very much specialize in helping people create and run masterminds but obviously um do you how important do you think it is for an entrepreneur in any field to be a part of a mastermind and whether it's a paid one, a hybrid like what you're talking about, or it's one that uh, they get invited to, they just you know network, brainstorm, and support. And and with that being said, you being someone that runs masterminds, are you also part of a participant in masterminds? And can you Absolutely. elaborate on any of that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I run three of my own masterminds. They're all for different people and different reasons and purposes. One of them is a peer mastermind. So it's a true peer mastermind. They're not joining it because they're looking to learn from you know my coaching and mentoring. It's you know we're all equals in that mastermind. Um, I don't want, I don't get too far down this rabbit hole, but like in that peer mastermind, I do charge people a fee because I find that I've seen many peer masterminds created over the years that are free, um, and it, they end up falling apart because people aren't committed. Yeah. So for mine, for instance, we put a small fee on it. It's not an income driver for my business, but there's a small fee so that people take it seriously, show up and are committed to the process. So my story is I got started in my first mastermind 25 years ago, and it was a peer entrepreneur mastermind. And when I, we joined that mastermind, it was simply to grow our businesses and be better entrepreneurs. That's why we all joined. But what happened is what was shocking to me is that within five or six months in meeting in these meetings, I'm starting to watch like grown men cry as they open up and talk about their screwed up marriages and their kid problems and the anxiety and depression they're having from the business running them. And that's not what we signed up for. So if someone had come to me at that time and said, Jay, let's join this mastermind where you're going to talk about all your personal issues and, and open up and get vulnerable, I would have been like, nope, I'm out, <laughs> not yeah. signing up for that. Yeah. But that yeah. was the byproduct of joining the mastermind. And for me, it was like, oh, my God, like this is a level of human connection that I hadn't even had, you know, by the time I was 30 um, that was, to, that's the reason I went all in on masterminds and just started joining everyone I could and, and running them and, and then, uh, starting to eventually creating my own. So to me, that's really the, the, you know, the core piece of it is that connectivity, that human connection piece. And, and that's why, um, I think every person should have some kind of peer mastermind. Absolutely. Yeah. It almost seems like, and I and I've been a part of something like that before, and I've felt that, and it's been probably you know that part of it has been the the thing that has allowed me to be most authentic with my myself with a group of people, right? To to get to get that deep connection, and when you can be authentic with someone about you know where you're at, you know, instead of it's like we put on this mask every time we get on and go, oh yeah, everything's great, and you know, kicking ass and taking names, and then behind the scenes, something else is really, really going on. Um, yeah, and I, I just think that once you get to that that deeper level of connection and the authenticity of like what's the what's real here, and how do you take one where you're at with what's real, whether that's positive or negative, in whatever sense that you look at it, and 
you know, elevate it to something that makes a difference in your life or your business or, or, or whatever. I think that's pretty powerful. I love that about that, about masterminds. Yeah. yeah. One of the ways I talk about that is that in most areas of our life, everyone we deal with has some kind of agenda. Like mm -hmm. our, our families have an agenda. Sometimes our friends have agenda. Our clients have agendas. Our vendors, our mentors have agendas, right? Yeah. And when you create uh, the right kind of container for a mastermind, the idea is the only agenda people have, it's dropping those masks. The only agenda is to help each other grow and thrive. And when you approach it from that standpoint that's where that magic that's where that invisible intangible napoleon hill stuff starts to happen is because it's not about you know me worrying about what i say because i want to feel smart or look smart or i'm trying to get business from people it's it's showing up total authenticity and being who you are and revealing the real problems that you have yeah that's um that's interesting so i got an, a, a question about that when it comes to, uh, now let's jump to the other side of the fence here. Now we're in that thought process of using mastermind as a way of creating a high-end offer in, in our business, whatever business or model that, or, or market that you're, that you're in. Do you think from a how, attracting people to being interested in that mastermind that that should be revealed in, you know, early on, meaning, you know, if you're going to be a part of this group, you're also going to be deeply connecting and creating safe and authentic space with them. Or do you think that just should be a kind of a surprise aspect that, that keeps them there for years to come? I'm curious about your sales approach because I mean, I want to just, uh, you know, like I could sell them on the idea that be a part of this, this will help your business and make you money, right? That sort of thing. But, you know, I, al I also just want to get on the rooftop and go, hey, be a part of this because you're going to have a bunch of really great people that you're going to be able to share your life with and your experiences with and get ideas from that will love you and support you and that sort of thing. But is that a bad sales approach or what? What do you, th what do you think? Yeah, it's a great question. And there's a lot of nuance in the answer because, um, you know, may, you may have heard the expression before, um, uh, sell them what they want, give them what they need, right? Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the example of that first mastermind I joined. You know, if what I needed was human connection, but if somebody had tried to sell me that, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have gone for that, right? right. Sales, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there, there, there are ways that you want to hint at the the power of that kind of inner circle, exclusive, intimate, confidential. You know, so you paint the picture of that kind of environment but you downplay the, yeah, you're going to come in and, you know, drop your pants and talk about, you know, all kinds of stuff you probably never imagined you would talk to anyone else uh, about. So there is, you know, that's sort of some of the nuance in the marketing language and, and that kind of thing that you use. Um, and I would and imagine, I, I would imagine that the, um, it also depends on how they come into your space. So if you're in the pro if you've been in the process of running the mastermind for a period of time and someone within the mastermind says to their friend or colleague or whatever, you really need to be a part of this because of this, that's probably a different conversation than you might have with them as far as, you know, uh, then someone just, you know, showing up and talking to you about it. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because often what happens is the people who have been in a really good mastermind, they will talk to others about it and they will encourage others to join and they will talk about how vulnerable the conversations get and that kind of thing. But it's coming from that trusted source. Yeah. I want to address this from one other standpoint, mainly because I'll forget if if I don't mention it now. And that is that a lot of people think a mastermind of just is for business people, for entrepreneurs. And I work with a ton of personal development people, healers, and one of the objections that they often uh, voice is that, you know, the one like the one on one work that I do with my clients is very personal. They are not going to get into a group setting and talk about, you know, their trauma, their, you know, uh, issues around whatever it is. And if you design the container correctly and you create the correct culture, it's amazing what people will open up to. And it's all, it comes back to that relationship piece, right? When you build a relationship where people trust each other, where there's mutual respect, 
where there's, you know, there's codes and protocols around confidentiality and constant reminders of confidentiality. It's amazing what people will open up. And I often think about, you know, in like, um, like group therapy sessions or, um, you know, even like an AA meeting, you know, people don't go to AA meetings because they're going to learn something tangible that they're walking out with. I mean, you, you can go to one AA meeting and learn the 12 steps and, you know, if that's all it took, you'd be good. But it's the process that they take you through in those AA meetings that creates the value. It's actually going through the process. And that's very much the way the mastermind works when you get into these more substantive conversations and, you know, talk about some of the vulnerable issues. So, but not all masterminds are like that, right? So, I mean, do you, so you said you run three masterminds. One is a peer mastermind where the other two that you run um, do they, are they slightly different in who they serve and who's connected to them? Is that re the reason why they're separated from each other? Yeah. So I run an in-person uh, mastermind here in Pittsburgh for uh, entrepreneurs. And then I run my client mastermind for the people that I'm helping to grow an online coaching, speaking, healing business wow. with the, and, and all of the people in my mastermind there have or are working on creating a mastermind as the fuel, as the revenue driver for their business. My mastermind that I run is a hybrid. So because I am doing a lot of coaching, mentoring, and training as part of the mastermind, but what I also do is I'm very intentional about creating the relationships with the people in the mastermind. Yeah. And it was interesting. I was doing, um, I have an event coming up, which you can see on the screen here. And I was getting some updated new, new testimonials uh, about the mastermind uh, for this event. So I, I created this uh, testimonial reel about four or five months ago, and I was adding like three new people in mixing it in. And what occurred to me as I was doing that is every single person that I had asked for these testimonials without any prompting from me, talked about how much value they get from the other members in the group by being part of my mastermind. And I was like, wow, okay, that's hitting the nail on the head right there because yeah. they're recognizing, even though I'm still doing a lot of coaching and mentoring and training, they're recognizing that there's more value from other the other members in the group than just what I can provide. Yeah. So take out that that uh, hybrid aspect of it and look at it just from a non-hybrid mastermind standpoint. There's always a leader, I take it, or someone that's kind of overseeing the structure of the mastermind to keep it on track and that sort of thing. Is that accurate? Is that the person that like starts it and and maybe they don't do training, but they bring people together to uh, do a circle of sharing this is what I need this is what you know I yes. how I can support is that kind of the structure yeah. of, of so so in like my peer mastermind for instance I am the facilitator so okay. I, I'm the person who brought it together but I run the meetings and that's a skill like it's a skill I've worked on for 25 years yeah. I still work on it it's it's my it's my superpower also in my case um because I just love doing it I love the challenge of the group dynamic and pulling people out of their shells and, and getting them to open up and feel safe that. So in a peer mastermind, my primary role is facilitator in my hybrid mastermind. My primary role is as a coach and mentor to all my clients. And then my secondary role is as facilitator. Um, and one of the things I say is that no two masterminds are alike or should yeah. be alike. Right. Yeah. Like you shouldn't create my mastermind or Napoleon Hills or anyone else's. You need to kind of figure out what are the pieces of the puzzle to put together that take advantage of your superpowers, but more importantly, deliver the most impact to your your members or clients. That's something that you help people figure out. Yeah, absolutely. OK. Yeah. yeah. Now, time frame of a mastermind, you know, uh, is it is it always 12 months or are there shorter time frames? Do you, is there a you know, recommended, to, you know, is it 12 months is the recommended or what, what do you do as far as timeframes are concerned? Yeah. 
So um, again, no hard and fast rules on this. Um, when people who are coaches, speakers, healers, thought leaders are creating them, we usually encourage people to start, you know, do a six month or 12 month initial commitment. The reason to do six months is for people who have less confidence in their ability to market and sell it and get people to buy in because, you know, it's a matter, just a matter of the longer the commitment, the bigger it chunk it's, you know, yeah. you're asking somebody to bite off or commit to and often a bigger price too. So what I encourage people to do is to create the type of mastermind where the initial commitment is six or 12 months, but you, you plant the seeds right from the beginning that it doesn't end in six or 12 months. It's not like a course where there's a start and a finish. And once you finish the course, you're good. You know, thanks very much and good luck on your journey, but that you can stay in the mastermind for years. If as long and as that's you what you got, that. that's what the title was. How do you keep people in, you know, how do you, I, I forget the title exactly. How do you get keep people active in your, your world for three years rather than three months? And is, and, is that something that you feel like you really specialize on, on crafting the, like you said, the container that's, that serves and supports that? Is that something that you think that you've really gotten, you know, down to, you know, uh, an art that you teach your clients to create? How do you create a mastermind that keeps people engaged for years instead of months, that type of thing? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that there's, the, it, it's so I always, you know, creating a mastermind is not rocket science, right? But there are some nuances to creating the container right from the beginning and then managing that container as it evolves and grows and develops. That's some of the facilitation part and, and just the understanding, you know, group dynamics and, and, and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's, um, you know, you're, you're, to me, one of the biggest struggles we have as entrepreneurs, coaches, et cetera, is um, stability of income. And, you know, that's one of the things a mastermind creates or these longer term programs creates is that, you know, first of all, people are committing up front to either six or 12 months. And then if you, you know, have created it properly and they're continuing to get value and they want to stay in the program beyond that, you know, it really evens out your revenues from this sort of traditional coaching model, which is launch based, right? I launch a course, I launch a three month program, put all that effort into it, you get all the you know JV partners lined yeah. up, you do a big launch, hopefully it's successful, but and you get this nice spike in revenue, but then you've got nothing in yeah. between. Until I call you... that I call that start over income, right? Yeah. It's income that you have to start over and over and over again and do that same process. And that's, you know, one of the reasons why I got into the tech side of things is because I like that monthly reoccurring revenue or that revenue that I can count on. And it sounds like masterminds not it not being a, you know, necessarily a subscription based, you know, model, but it's still a reoccurring revenue model with your clients re-upping and, and the clients bringing in new clients in referrals and that sort of thing is. Is yeah. that, you say that most most of the people buying a high ticket program are going to pay 80% will pay you monthly. Yeah. And so that alone, you know, it, it's not as good as the SaaS model, uh, which you guys have with the action era, but it's it's it does create that recurring revenue. Yeah. Um one of the things well, I think one of the misconceptions a lot of people have when in creating something like this is that they need to be established at a certain level, right? before they can actually entertain the idea of a mastermind. So like, you know, I know that starting out, I had to break through this. It was a long time ago that I, I was able to break through this. I had this role that in order for me to be able to be a messenger, right? I had to write the book first, right? Or um, I had to have this e email list. And in order to be able to sell a mastermind, you obviously have to have a big email list, right, Jay? Right? Is that, I mean, what are the, what are the myths that you think people run into that prevents them from even exploring the idea of a mastermind or even showing up for like your mastermind boot camp to hear what you have to say what do you think stops people from doing that what are you what have you heard that's a huge part of it is the am i ready part and it's really all mindset um so what one of the many reasons that i love the mastermind model is that you can create one without having that huge list or that big fancy sales funnel 
So one of the things, one of the stats that I love to uh, offer up is if you have a $1,500 course or like a $1,500, you know, coaching package one-on-one or something, you need 67 clients just to reach six figures in revenue. Mm -hmm. And getting 67 clients is hard. And you're probably going to need that fancy sales funnel or that big email list. And often you're paying affiliate commissions or maybe you're running paid ads. So you don't really even have six figures in revenue. Whereas with a you know mastermind, you got nine people paying you a thousand dollars a month. That's a six figure business right there. Yeah. And so yeah, it's interesting because um, I fell into that trap early on too, thinking that, well, if I have a $97 thing and if I just sell and I want to make six figures, I just need to sell, you know, calculated out X number of things. And I just, you know, just got to put myself in front of it. And of course they're going to spend $97 because it's $97. But what I found out just through the actual trying one or the other is it's easier to sell some 10 people at $10,000 than it is to sell, you know, 150 or 200 people at $97 or whatever that number number is. Yep. And you often, I think that in a lot of ways kind of breaks people's brain a little bit really convince 10 people to spend $10,000? Yes, especially if you build in the value and they see it and you're able to convey the value to them. This is what you're going to get and why you're going to get it over 12 months rather than just reading my book and hopefully you'll get some change. We get to play together for 12 months, get to know each other, not just me and you, but you, me and 12 other, 15 other people or whatever that is. And that is powerful. And I think if people can convey the value to their clients, it's, they'll find it's a lot easier to sell someone at $10,000 than a hundred bucks, you know? Yeah. And if, and if you have a hard time grasping that concept, there's a great book out there by Dan Sullivan called 10 X is easier than two X. Mm. And it helps you sort of break through that mindset limitation that I can't sell a high ticket item. The, uh, the, so there's two examples I'll give you of people, um, one is uh, our friend, I know you know, Debbie White. Mm -hmm. Debbie White built a mid six figure business with nothing but a $14,000 mastermind. She didn't do one on one. She didn't have a course. The only way you could work with her was her $14,000 mastermind. She built that to mid six figures. What's interesting is Debbie now in the last couple of years has added, I think she has a course now and she's got a lower end uh, program, but she did that after she got to six figure, mid six figures. I also, there is somebody that you, you know, uh, one of my clients was a brand new coach and never launched anything. She's going to all these networking meetings, like you guys run, like collaborate and, and those types of things. And meeting all these other coaches who are also brand new and hadn't launched anything. And as we do in those networking meetings, we, we make friends, we do follow-up calls, that kind of thing. So she scheduled 31 follow-up calls. And she get, came up with this idea of what if I created a little mastermind for four months for $500, not 500 a month, just 500 total, right? Yeah. Just so we can put a little group of people together who all of whom haven't launched anything and help each other launch our first program, give each other the accountability, the support, share what we're learning by going to all these other programs and buying programs. So as a brand new coach hadn't launched anything, had no clients, she created $7,000 in revenue just by putting together this little mastermind. So by booking out those, those calls, having those conversations, I mean, think about it. Who couldn't, use seven grand, right. You know, in, in, yeah, you know, after probably a week of calls, right. Generate seven grand. And yeah. I would imagine that was a springboard to, oh, if I can do this, then yeah. I can create this. Is that what happened? Yeah, absolutely. So that that's the, the thing that, that, that sort of, you know, I use that example of a thousand dollars a month or a $10,000 program. And because that's kind of like, you know, what I, I'm almost like an industry standard or something. But, you know, you can create a mastermind at a lower level, especially when you're just starting out and you don't have that confidence or you don't feel like you've got that authority or credibility or whatever. Um, you know, there's lots of ways to to slice and dice it to uh, create something that's powerful. And the other thing, the other sort of perspective that I like to share is a lot of us, when we start out, we, you know, come from the uh 
angle of I've got 25 or 30 years of experience doing X. So what program can I create out of that that people will buy, right? And what I encourage people to do in thinking about their mastermind is think about what's the program you can create that you would be most passionate about delivering. And even more importantly, who are the people that you would be most passionate about working with? So really dive into your ideal right fit client, your avatar. In my vernacular, it's purple fish. Um, who who are those people that you? Uh, I'm gonna pause here just to so. One of the most frustrating things, and this happens to me. I mean, I have a course, and people take my course. Some of those people take the course. They will rave about the course. They'll give me a great testimonial about the course, but they didn't show up and do all the work and get the result. To me, that's more frustrating <laughs> than not, them not taking the course at all. Like, Because most of us in this business, we're not doing it to amass a fortune. We're doing it because we want to help people. And so to me, that sort of angle of I get to pick and choose who I let into my mastermind is a, is a great marketing angle, first of all, but it kind of takes you out of that whole mindset of constantly chasing clients because you're, you're not just letting the people into the program who can write the check, but you're actually hand selecting them. Who do you want to wake up every day and work with? Is that the process that you teach uh, your clients to do is so rather than just saying, Hey, here's a sign up page and everybody that signs up is in what do they do? They book a call and you take them through a series of questions to find out are yeah. they committed? Are they, are they, you know, are they an energy match maybe to the rest of the group that you already know that's in? Is that you know something you do? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So it, one of the, you know, sort of part of the process that I teach is um, using assessments, which is a way to initially qualify people in terms of where they're at and if they're a right fit and then using an application process to get into the mastermind. So in my case, there's like a written application. I get that. And then I do the one-on-one -on -one call with them because it it's important that they're a right fit. I mean, you, you put the wrong person into, or you put a narcissist into a mastermind that's geared towards everybody helping each other. And it's, it's not going to help the situation. Has that, has that happened to you before? Have you had to kick anybody out? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, I, I can relate. I remember. Yeah. And I, and I used to be married to a narcissist. So I'm, I, the prior yeah, to that, I was, radar, right? <laughs> I was not good at recognizing them. Now I'm pretty good, but they're, they're uh, slippery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's true. That's another, that's another, uh, that's, a, that's a whole nother, uh, a whole interview. Other call, yeah. <laughs> You'd have to change your graphic at that point. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, tell me a bit more about this boot camp that's coming up because, um, because I think that the, the thing that I love about you and the, what, um, how you're respected in our industry amongst our peers in what you do is that you're, you're one of very, very few people that just really specialize. This is your lane. And you're, you're really good at this. You've obviously, you know, run your own and you make, you know, your own great income from that. The boot camp is the boot camp something where someone can come to and in three days really just kind of get the model. Yeah. What do they get at the boot camp? Yeah. So the boot camp is the perfect place to start. Um, first of all, it's virtual. Um, so anybody can attend and um, it, it's, it's a commitment of time, right? It's three full days because we do a lot of work in that boot camp. Like it's not just a pitch fest and it's not a bunch of, you know, it's even not a bunch of me talking at you. It's, you know, templates and worksheets and breakout rooms and we're actually doing the work. So the idea in the boot camp is we're going to help you figure out what mastermind you can create that fits your superpowers you know, delivers the most value to your clients. Then we dive deep into the, who are the right fit clients? Who are the people that you want and who are the people you don't want in, in your mastermind um, to create the right culture? Then we help you build a simple funnel. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that term, just a simple process 
to move people from what I call no like and trust to no love and trust, where they they want to take that next step to work with you and commit to six or 12 months uh, ongoing. So we help you build that kind of simple model. We talk about the assessments and the application process, how to create that exclusivity uh, so that you position yourself as in, you know, no, I, I don't need to convince you to join my mastermind. Tell me why I should let you in. Yeah. Well, what value can you bring? How committed are you going to be? Um, and then we, in the boot camp, we help you craft a plan for what you're going to do in the next 90 days to move forward uh, with this. So it's a, it's an interesting event because I've had people at the very beginning of their coaching business come in and they feel like at the end of the boot camp they have so much more clarity on what high ticket program they can create, even if they're not ready to do it immediately walking out of the boot camp. That clarity it gives them, it's almost having like a roadmap, is major league helpful. But I've also had like I have seven figure uh, uh, coaches come into this boot camp and walk out of it with huge amount of value because I we've asked them to look at things they might even already be currently doing from a different lens and a different viewpoint, and they get they get value out of it as well. Yeah, they're reassessing everything based off of of that fresh look. That's um, so literally, I, we someone could attend this boot camp and walk out and be ready to. Put this in front of people and uh, and uh, and start transforming their business. Yeah, actually, one of the exercises we do in the boot camp is so that you can walk out of it and actually have a conversation with somebody around you know what you're thinking about creating. You know, you don't have to have it totally formulated, but we do a, one of the exercises we do is you actually uh, work on the language you would use if you ran into somebody the next day and said, "Hey, I'm thinking about creating this mastermind, and here's who it's for, and here's what it's about, and you would be a great fit. Can we schedule a call to talk about it?" Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Um. I definitely want to give some time. I think there probably could be a few questions that people can throw in a chat. I'd like to invite anybody that has any questions because I want to give enough time for us uh, to answer a few questions. Put that in chat. But I got a very, very important question for you, Jay. Very important. Okay. Yeah. You know me well enough to, I see that smirk on your face. Um, you got to explain to me the purple fish, man. Tell me what the per I, mean, I don't know if anybody's asked you this question, but I want to know the story behind the purple purple fish. So I don't think we have time for the entire purple <laughs> fish story. Um, it's, a, it's a whole story. There's a whole like build a whole up story. and uh, you know yeah. Conclude. Yeah. I got you. All right, get yeah. some. And and I need slides because it's about my kids and it does it oh, just it doesn't it, okay. it doesn't yeah. land without the slides sharing my kids. Yeah. So the purple fish story um, developed from a metaphor that I started using about how most of us, when we start our coaching business, we are like fishing in the ocean. We're driving a, a, a lonely boat into the ocean, trying to find the fish. And we know there are millions of fish in the ocean, but where are they? And then what kind of fish are we even trying to catch? What kind of bait are we using? And then we start questioning ourselves, do we need a bigger boat, a faster boat, a shinier boat? Do we need different tactics and strategies? And, and so I started explaining that the most successful coaches on the planet don't fish in the ocean. What they do is they create their own stocked pond. And the way they do that is they're very intentional about their marketing language and their messaging to, to have that language speak to their ideal client, not all the potential clients, but their ideal client their purple fish. So it started with that metaphor about not fishing in the ocean, fish in the pond, which is kind of your niche, right? Like narrow down your niche, but then in your marketing messaging to really speak to that ideal client, because those are the ones you want to attract into your pond. You'll still attract other fish into your pond than the ideal client when you speak just to that to you know, write your marketing to speak to that one type of fish, but um, it just is a, it's also a way to distinguish yourself because usually when we are fishing in the ocean, we do finally find that big school of fish. We recognize that there are thousands of other coaches just like us that found those fish too, and they're fishing in those same waters. So it started as a metaphor. Now it's a parable. 
that I tell about my kids and taking them fishing for the first time. Well, I love it. So, I mean, seal of approval, bud. Uh, great, great brand and uh, great story. And I've I've heard your story, of course, with the kids and and that sort of thing. So, um, does anybody have any questions for Jay? This is a great opportunity to ask Jay questions about masterminds in general. Uh, here's one from Catherine. Will you create a mastermind from the participants of your boot camp if there is a hunger for continu continued alliance? So. Yes, during the boot camp, um, I will make an invitation that you can join my uh, client mastermind, which is to help you build a sustainable six figure plus business using a mastermind or hybrid program at the center of it. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Now, uh, you know, before we take more questions, one of the things that you agreed to in being a part of this this training with us is that you are going to give, tell us about how people can sign up and what deal they're going to get for being a part of your, your bootcamp. It's, and by the way, it's the six figure masterminds bootcamp. I want to emphasize six figures. So let's, uh, if anybody's interested in six figures, there's a, there's a good, uh, good point there. So I, I forget what I told you. I would give well, you, you normally, you, but you normally sell tickets to it for how much? Uh, there, it's a $47 ticket and I don't know if we discussed this or if I'm allowed, but I am happy to gift a free ticket to anyone here today who would like to. That's what it says right here on my paper. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look <laughs> at that. Free, it was like it was planned. <laughs> the six figure <laughs> masterminds boot camp, normally $47. So listen, uh, I just really want to say for those that are watching this and there it is, if you go into the chat, uh, uh, Becky uh, has put in uh, the link to get that deal. There's a coupon code. So make sure when you go in there and you click to check out that you put in that coupon code. And I think that zeroes it out from the $47 price. This yes. is an opportunity to learn from someone uh, that is absolutely a master in this. This is an authority. This is what we like to, we like to say in, in action era is that it's okay to be an expert, right? There's a lot of experts out there, but to be the authority in something is what sets you apart from everybody else. And I can say with absolute confidence and being in this industry for 20, over 24 years now, seeing a lot of people come and go, that Jay Fairbrother is an absolute authority on helping people create six-figure masterminds. And he's just invited uh, all of us to attend his event totally free because of this uh this talk here today. So thank you, Jay, for that, uh, that generosity, because I think anybody that shows up and part plays full out for those three days could walk away with something, will walk away with something if they play full out, uh, yeah. that can absolutely transform their business in a massive way. Um, yeah. I've seen it and I know you are the, the person to teach that. Anything so this is, you want to say about? It? Yeah. I mean, this is my favorite thing that I do. Um, and the, and that's coming from someone who was not a big fan of three day events before I uh, followed uh, our friend and and my mentor Amana Guy's advice and said create the three day event. Uh, and I love doing this event now. Um, and I guarantee if you show up, you will laugh, you will most likely cry, you will walk away with value, and you'll learn a ton. But mostly you'll get a roadmap for how, you know, again, regardless of where you're at right now, for what you can envision that is a program that you create that you're passionate about and you are attracting the people that you're most passionate about helping. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you call it a boot camp because you know, I don't, you, it's it's not an event. It, it is, you get, you're getting in there and you're getting your hands dirty. You're actually doing the work. I think a lot of events are seen as show up, maybe have your picture, your, your camera on or off on Zoom most of the time off, you know, listening to it in the background while you're doing whatever, but this is not that at all. This is, you know, a boot camp is, you're going to get, forgive my language, you're going to get shit done at this event. And, uh, and yeah. I think that makes it even more valuable. Yeah. Um, and we, we have fun. We even have custom songs. <laughs> I've it's heard about of those yeah. custom songs. I love that. Uh, Let's say someone is listening to this recording after November 20th. What's 
what's a way that they can connect with you or find out when your next boot camp is so they can reach out to you and actually connect with you? Yeah. So you can go to sixfiguremasterminds.com. Um, it, it works if you spell the six or use the number Very and smart. sixfiguremasterminds, plural.com. And my other options for working with me and uh, other programs will be, uh, you know, available to you on that uh, website. Uh, the boot camp um, I do, you know, a couple times a year. Or so there will you know, be another one coming up if, if this one doesn't work out. The, the last thing I mentioned is there is an option to upgrade on the boot camp to a VIP ticket where you get recordings, some other bonuses and um, that kind of thing. So awesome. Okay, cool. Does anybody have any questions for Jay about masterminds in general or about his boot camp? All right, cool. I see cool. Becky put that link in there for the 10X is easier and 2X book. That's awesome. Yep. So, oh yeah, definitely. Um, all right. Well, Jay, um, I appreciate you showing up here today on this. Oh, well, let's see if we got a message has popped up. Oh, uh, thank you for the free ticket from Nicole. Um, Thank you for being here today. Thank you everybody for being here today. I, you know, I know this is a unique day for us uh, in a lot of ways, um, but I hope that you got the inspiration that I got. I mean, I, every time I see you, Jay, I'm like, I really want to create another mastermind. Then I remind myself, I got too much stuff going on <laughs> and my business partner would kill me. Um, so, um, but I, I love that. I know that if this is what I was called to do, if I was looking for a high ticket offer that is, you know, not about just getting the money, but it's about really creating transformation in people's lives or their business or whatever that you're, you're, you, you specialize in. I know that I, this is where I can go to get everything that I need to make that happen. And so I just really want to uh, acknowledge you for who you are and the work that you do and, and the way you show up in people's lives, it's it's tr truly brilliant. And I hope that everybody gets a chance uh, that hasn't spent any time with you to actually do that at your boot camp and to really dive into who Jay is and how he serves us and how he, how in serving us, we can serve the people that we are. And Jay, one of the things I just really want to leave with you today, because I, I like to remind people of this, is, you know, is your, your ripple of change in the world. You know, a lot of people think, well, my ripple of change is just the people that I directly touch. It's not. It's so much bigger than that. It's all the people that you've helped create these containers in which other people can come in and be in and be authentic and vulnerable and, 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 you know, transform their lives and their business and their health and their, you know, relationships and all the things that is a byproduct of that container that you help people create is part of a massive ripple of change that you are creating in the world. And I want you to know how special that is and that I see you and the work that you do. And I am incredibly grateful for that. So thank you for being here today and doing what you do and showing up the way you show up. And, and I'll leave you with, um, th this is addressing a crisis. In 2023, the U.S. Surgeon General declared an epidemic in the country, and it had nothing to do with a disease or a virus. It was an epidemic of loneliness. Mm -hmm. And even in the last several months, the World Health Organization has created an entire commission to address the global crisis of social isolation and loneliness. Yeah. And what we're doing here is creating human connection. And that's why I'm passionate about it. And, and what I encourage my clients to do is create a program where you can have that level of connection that you may not even have with your family. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And I hope everybody heard that. I hope everybody's taken the time to go to that link in the chat. Make sure you copy that or write down that coupon code so that you get the free ticket to Jay's event. It's only, you know, it's just in a couple of weeks from now. So uh, get get signed up and be a part of it. Thank you, Jay, for being here today. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and allowing me to be the host. This is my first my first EIN hosting uh, session, and I'm glad I did it with you, Jay. So yeah. all right, Thanks, everybody. Robert. Thank you. Have a wonderful uh, Super Tuesday, 
And we will see you next week uh, with our next guest. So keep your eyes out for posts and updates on that. And have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.